Here we're going to look at a nice little equation involving the floor function. Before we do that, let's recall what that is. So the floor of x is the greatest integer less than or equal to x. So like, for example, the floor of 2 is 2 because 2 is less than or equal to 2. The floor of 7.99 is 7 because that is the greatest integer that is less than or equal to 7.99 and the floor of minus half is minus one. So you can think of this as an elevator down to the closest integer. But if you're at an integer, you stay there. Okay, so our goal is to find x that satisfies this equation. So we've got x minus the floor of x equals one over, one over x plus one over the floor of x. Okay, so let's get to it. So the first thing that I wanna do is take this right-hand side of the equation and then multiply the numerator and the denominator by this product x times the floor of x. And that'll have the effect of clearing the denominators in the denominator and then introduce something, introducing something new in the numerator. Okay, so let's see how that goes. So like I said, we're gonna multiply this right hand side by x floor of x over x floor of x. So that means the left hand side is unchanged. We have x minus floor x equals, so it's gonna be x floor x over, so multiplying this one by x floor x will give us floor x. Multiplying this one by x floor x will give us x. So we've got something like that. Okay, great. And now uh, we're pretty set up well for cross multiplying. So maybe we can think of this as being over one, then we can cross multiply to totally get rid of the fractions. That'll give us x squared minus floor of x squared because we've got a difference of squares once we uh, multiply there, equals x times the floor of x. Now what we wanna do is notice we've got an x squared term here and we've got an x floor of x term here. That really motivates us that maybe we could complete a square binomial involving um, x and the floor of x. But it won't work if we have a minus floor of x squared. It'll only work if we have a plus floor of x squared. So what we're gonna do is rearrange this equation. I'm gonna move this floor of x squared over here, and I'm gonna move this x floor of x over to the left-hand side. So that's gonna leave me with x squared minus x floor of x. Then I'm gonna leave myself a little room equals floor of x squared like that. Now I wanna complete the square over here on the left-hand side. So if you recall the standard strategy for completing the square, we take half the coefficient of this middle term and then we square it. So notice the coefficient of this middle term is minus one. We take half of that, that gives us minus half. We square it, that gives us a quarter. So we're going to add one quarter floor of x squared. And that makes this left-hand side into a perfect square binomial. But luckily, that is a like term to this thing over here on the right-hand side. And we have to add this to the right-hand side so as not to change the equation. So we're gonna add a quarter floor x squared over to the right-hand side as well. So let's see what that leaves us with. So over here on the left-hand side, we can factor this like x minus half floor x quantity squared like that. So just check if we multiply half floor x times half floor x, we get quarter floor x squared, and then half plus half is one, so that works out when we FOIL this thing out. And then these guys are like terms, so this adds up to five over four floor of x squared. Now we can go ahead and take the square root of both sides and notice that we get x minus one half floor x equals, so it's gonna be plus minus the square root of five over two times the floor of x. So whenever you take the square root, you could have a positive solution or a negative solution, so that takes care of that. Okay, so now we're gonna do a little bit of a trick. This is not super obvious what the solution should be, but if we subtract one half from both sides, we're actually gonna be helped out a little bit. So, and I meant subtract a half floor x. So let's do that. We'll subtract one half floor x from both sides. And let's see what that gives us. 
So over there on the left hand side of the equation, we'll have x minus floor x, because half minus, minus half minus half is minus one. And then over on the right hand side of the equation, we'll have um, negative one plus minus the square root of five over two times the floor of x, like that. Now I'm gonna do this in two cases, and I'm actually only gonna do in one case. I'll leave it as a homework problem for you guys to do the other case. So the case that I'm gonna look at is the case when we have the positive part attached to this square root of five. So in other words, we have x minus the floor of x equals minus one plus the square root of five over two times the floor of x. Now here's the really important thing, is that this left hand side, this is sometimes called the fractional part of x, and it's denoted by these curly braces and then x. And the fractional part of x is always between zero and one. Why is that? Well, we're taking x and subtracting the greatest integer that is smaller than x. So look, if we take x, in this case it would be 7.99, and we subtract seven, we're gonna get 0.99. That's between zero and one. And similarly for all of those others. So let's just kind of reiterate that in this line right here. So we have um, the integer part, sorry, the fractional part of x, this is always on this half open interval zero to one like that. Okay, good. But if this left hand side is always on this half open interval, then that tells us that this right hand side is also always on this half open interval. So we have minus one plus the square root of five over two times the floor of x is also always on this half open interval from uh, zero to one. Now what I wanna notice is that I've got this number here times the floor of x is on the interval zero to one. But notice that the floor of x can only take integer values. And from this, it follows that the floor of x equals one. We don't know what x is yet, but we know what the floor of x is. But luckily, we can use that to find out x just by rewriting this equation a little bit. So I can add the floor of x to both sides. And notice that gives me x equals, so if I add the floor of x to both sides, I'll have one plus the square root of five over two times the floor of x. So in other words, x equals one plus the square root of five over two. Good, so that's, what, that's the value we get for this first case when we take this plus sign right here. So maybe see if we get a solution for this other case when we take a minus sign from the square root and post in the comments what you get. Okay, that's a good place to stop.